Did you know before you read this book that your dad had his own obsessions and fantasies that he had thought about, that he had dreamed of committing murder, that he had uh, had an obsession with fire and with explosives? No, that's. Uh, that, I don't think that's the type of thing one asks one's dad. Were you surprised to read that about your dad? Uh, very surprised. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know what to think about it. Uh, I suppose everyone has their, their secret thoughts. and So it was somewhat of a shock. you feel grateful that your father wrote this book? Or do you feel put off by it? I mean, I'm just curious about your, your overall reaction to it. Do you feel a... Is the book an invasion, do you think, or is it... No, no, I, I feel uh, nothing but pride for him, for writing the book, and uh, having the courage to um, bear his soul when he didn't have to. He, did, he didn't have to get involved with uh, trying to, you know, help me out and support me and be a, an emotional support for me, and uh, I'll be grateful to him forever for it. Did you ever consider talking to your parents to your dad about homosexuality? Is that something no, that you felt you could ever raise? Early on, I, I really didn't know that much about it myself. Uh, all I knew was that it was something that uh, was to be kept hush-hush, not uh, talked about, not even thought about. So I just uh, kept it all within me and never, never talked about sexual issues at all, really, with anybody. Do you think if you had been able to talk about that in a more open way with your dad, for instance, that it would have helped, might have broken this veil of secrecy and enabled you to keep yourself from going down that road? Uh, I don't know exactly what, if anything, would have kept, ever kept me from going down that road. Talking about it, I don't think, would have made that much difference. Because, like I said, there were things going on in my head that... Uh, I would have never opened up and talked about with anybody. Your dad says he never realized how deeply troubled you were because he just thought you were shy the way he had been shy as a boy. Do you think the signs were there and he just missed them? No, I don't think so. Because uh, I had thoughts, I had fantasies, but there was, there was no outward show of, of anything that was wrong. You were pretty good at keeping it all inside. Right, I kept it inside. Didn't share any of my uh, thoughts or emotions with anybody. So uh, how would I ever know? No, you, you never saw any of it, as far as I know. I did not really hear from anyone about any of these activities. And that, that's what really strikes me now, is if I would, if I would have known, what would I have done about it? I think I, I would have done a lot about it. I feel it's uh, wrong for people who commit crimes to try to shift the blame onto somebody else, onto their parents or onto their, their upbringing or, circ or living circumstances. I, I think that's just a, a cop-out. And uh, my parents, my relatives, had no knowledge of what I was doing. They're absolutely not responsible for any of it in any way. And uh, I take full responsibility. But you, understand, but you understand that what you did would lead your father to ask himself all kinds of questions. That's true. Where, where did I go that. wrong? Was there something I could have said or done to have prevented this? Right. Did I in some way create or contribute to the terrible acts my son committed? I understand that. I, I just get uh, angry with other people who, who think that uh, they have a right to... Uh, to somehow try to blame my parents for what happened. That's not right at all. No one has the right to do that because they're totally innocent. They have no knowledge of it. And uh, that angers me. But parents just naturally, I mean, any parent that really cares, they just first of all say, I, gee, I feel guilty. You know, I, there's just feelings of guilt. What happened? What did I do? What could I have done? So that's a normal parental reaction. Your dad has wondered about all kinds of things, from the medication that your mom was on during her pregnancy, 
to the fact that you were exposed to violent arguments in the home from an early age and continuing to the possibility that he might have passed on some genetic propensity for obsession or violent behavior. Does any of that ring true to you? I can see why he'd wonder about those things, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're all excuses because I didn't feel accountable to anybody. I didn't feel that I had to to uh, face what I had done ever. And uh, so you, you have. there comes a point where a person has to has to be accountable for what he's done. Can't go, can't go around making excuses, uh, blaming other people, or other things. So I, I alone am the one who's responsible for what's happened. So let me ask: When did you first feel that that everyone is accountable for their actions? Well, thanks to you for for sending uh, that uh, creation science uh, material. Because I always, I always believe the uh, the lie that uh, evolution is truth, the theory of evolution is truth, that we all just came from uh, the slime, and uh, when we when we died, you know, that was it. There was nothing. So uh, the whole theory cheapens life, and uh, started reading books about how that show how evolution is is just a complete lie. There's there's no there's no basis in science to, to uphold it. And I've come to, since come to believe that, uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ is the true creator of uh, the heavens and the earth. It just didn't just happen. And uh, I've accepted him as my Lord and Savior. And I believe that I, as, long, as well as everyone else, will be accountable to him. Growing up, did you feel that you were accountable to your dad or to your mom? As the authority yes, figure I did. in the house? Yes, I did. I mean, they, they didn't let me uh, run wild. They were, they disciplined me. And uh, so I felt accountable to them. But afterwards, after I left the home, that's, that's when I uh, started wanting to uh, sort of create my own little world where I could be the one who had the complete control, where I didn't have to... Uh, about anyone else's demands, and uh, I just took it way too far. Well, at that period of time, I had drifted away from a belief in a supreme being, and I never, as a result, passed along the feeling that we are all accountable in the end. He owns us, and that basic concept is very fundamental to all of us. You feel that the absence, at least for a while, of a strong religious faith and yes. belief for some years may have prevented you from instilling some of that in Jeff. That's right. Is that how you feel? Yes, I think I had a big, uh, big part to do to do with it. I mean, uh, if you don't, if a person doesn't think that there there is a God to be accountable to, then then what's, what's the point of, of trying to uh, modify your behavior to keep it within acceptable ranges? That's how I thought, anyway. And uh, I've since come to believe that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is truly God, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're the only true God. What do you remember about your parents arguing when you were growing up? And what effect that had on you? It was, it was unnerving, depressing, uh, made me angry sometimes. Uh, I'd leave the house, go out in the woods and uh, sulk, brooding, you know, wondering why they had to uh, have such a rough relationship. Uh, most of the time they didn't seem to get along too well together. I never knew what the real, real underlying problems were. I didn't, I didn't feel it was my place to ask. Did you blame one or the other? Mom no, or dad? No. No, I didn't. I was just frustrated that things couldn't be uh, happier around the house. You just wanted things to be more peaceful. Right. Right. I never saw any, any real violent arguments as far as physical uh, hitting or anything like that, but there was a lot of yelling, a lot of uh, tension in the house sometimes.